All right, so today I am talking about something I've been working a lot with lately. I've been working with um, these more modern instruments like granular synthesizers that create a lot of evolving sounds. I've been trying to compose with them and it's brought me back to host automation and I wanted to cover that a little bit because it is something I think that is is not it doesn't surface in the industry as much and um, as some other technologies that I think probably many people watching this will understand, you know, they have more familiarity. With. I know I did. Anyway, host automation is a lot like automation that we're used to, where we maybe do MIDI learn or we're using MIDI CCs or something like that to use a controller or some kind of physical device to control what's happening in our instrument or in an effect or in a, our DAW, right? But host, host automation is different than that because there's no MIDI learn stage. You don't have to choose the parameter and MIDI learn it and then turn a knob and connect it up. As easy as that is, right? It's, it's not that that's hard, but host automation is different. And one of my favorite things about host automation is that it's a direct connection between the VST instrument and the DAW. And so when I come back later to a project months down the road and I load up my instrument, you know what? The controls just work because the instrument sets up what are called automation IDs with the DAW. Sometimes if I do that with MIDI CC or uh, MIDI automation, learn, MIDI learn, that sort of thing, I come back a few months and it's like, oh no, I, you know, I, I changed that knob to something else for another composition or I changed its CC value because there's not this bond between um, my controller and the software, right? So I like host automation because it's a little bit more integrated. It's quicker to set up, no MIDI learn, and then it has more longevity down the road when I uh, come back to something. Um, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to work with. Now, I'm using uh, a couple of examples here. I'm going to be using Complete Control Software, uh, which is basically just a wrapper. It's sort of like a contact wrapper um, made by Native Instruments. I'm also going to be using Machine and just talking a little bit, um, using those as examples because they have uh, host automation built in. And that brings me to an important point, which is not every VST uh, is going to have host automation. In which case you have to use MIDI CC. You know, almost everybody uses MIDI Learn or enables that ability. Um, but if you're using something like Contact or you're using Omnisphere, of course, Machine uh, and Complete Control, these have host automation. And there's a whole bunch of other great products out there that uh, also implement host autom auto automation, but it does have to be implemented by the instrument um, so does MIDI Learn, but MIDI Learn is, you know, so ubiquitous now. Anyway, I just want to make sure you understand if you go and you try something out and host automation isn't immediately working, it's not necessarily uh, something built in. Now, my first example with complete control, you'll see that it, it just works right out of the box. You, there's literally no setup. But if you're using machine, I do have to enable host automation, and that's because there's a limited number of host automation IDs and so as the composer, it's important that, you know, if they just, if they implemented every single possible control, then the DAW would have a, like, be overwhelmed. So in machine, they make you actually turn it on. But it's super simple. It's a step or two less than doing MIDI Learn. And again, like I said earlier, it has this advantage of it kind of has longevity if I come back to the project down the road. So I'm going to take myself off the screen here and just play... Um, this little uh, guitar ditty, right? So I've got, um, let me load up the instrument here so you can see it. This is just um, Sunburst guitar from, uh, I think it's the Session Guitarist libraries uh, from Native Instruments. All right, and I've just got a pretty basic guitar chord progression here and it's this is just a preset iterating through. Um, I've also got this uh, tambourine down here on the, the track below it running a machine. 
So let's just actually turn off the machine channel for a sec. And just listen to the guitar. And I want to show you how I would do host automation, okay? So with host automation, my controller is already set up for this. Um, and I want to just show you how easy it is. Uh, let me stop and I'm going to go back here. And um, I'm going to enable automation. Now you can see I have, a, I have it on my MIDI controller, but you can see on my, uh, let me see if I can, oh, my, my hand gets cut off because I have a mask on my green screen here. But you can see hopefully on the track, the little red button, the right, the automation right button turning on and off. So right has to be on, right? That's first thing. And then um, there I am, got my cursor. Now, if I go ahead, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change a value here um, for the pickup tone. So if you're a guitarist, you know you're gonna have on your electric guitar, usually a, a, a volume knob and then a tone knob. And you'd want to use that tone knob maybe to dial your dial back into the background when you know maybe the, you're in a you're in a chorus uh, or sorry you're in a like a verse and you want the singer's voice to come out front. You want a, a more dull tone, and you can hear what that sounds like. So this is like full tone. That's a much softer muted tone. And if you look behind me, you can see that I'm actually writing um, automation there. And that's because I have my host automation, I have automation right turned on. So I can turn that on and off right here. Let me um, actually just take myself off, scroll that down. So you can see hopefully right here when I turn automation on, then you can see that, oops, it's covering it up there. Automation on, automation off, read and write uh, are different functions. So as long as writing is on, then when I'm using this particular plugin, which is complete control software and Let's just bring that up. So uh, you may not be that familiar with complete control, but this is what it looks like. It's kind of a wrapper. So inside here is an instance of Cubit or uh, sorry, <laughs> contact and complete control is a wrapper that goes with native instruments, keyboards, their complete control keyboard. And I am using an S 49 here, but if you were to go into just the software here, and you were to adjust these knobs here, you can see that the ones that I'm changing here, the tone right under my mouse is changing. I'm, I'm controlling that for my controller. But if we were to actually just turn this knob, if we've got um, right on over here. Complete control software is just has host automation implemented and on by default so that when I hit record, and I go ahead, um, I'm going to see if I can, you can see how it's being, my mouse movements are being recorded as automation. It, so you don't have to have the controller. These, uh, you can actually see too, how this knob is being controlled by the automation. There you go. So you don't actually have to have the uh, complete control controllers to do this. These knobs write directly to an automation ID within Cubase or within whatever your DAW is, and it'll write this information. It writes it as automation lands, but you'll notice too that down here, these are not MIDI values. Sorry, let me zoom in here and we can look at what the values are here. So they're, they're not MIDI values that are being recorded. These are uh, automation IDs. This is 103, this is 102. So uh, it, there are numbers that indicate the automation ID and it's writing this automation and then it controls the plugin. So this is really nice when I, for example, as I said earlier, it's often the case that with electric guitar, you want uh, to 
to dial back your tone so that you are not as bright and you're not conflicting with the vocalist during passages in a song where the vocalist needs to be the main focus. So as a performer, it's something I got used to as a guitarist is to dial back my tone. So I'm still providing the rhythm, still providing the harmony, uh, but I'm not as bright. But then when it comes to my guitar solo, I'm going to crank up the, uh, the tone so that I cut through, right? Because now nobody's conflicting with me. I'm center stage. So when I'm doing productions, I'll often do this same thing. Um, if you work with electronic music, you'll know that you do the same thing with like a filter cutoff. You, you cut something off. Um, you'd maybe do like a low pass filter. You essentially take an instrument, a synthesizer, a bass line, a lead, whatever, and you move it to the background just by trimming its high end frequencies. So I do that in my productions. I'm going to dial back the tone, maybe during a verse, and I'll bring it up a little bit during a pre-chorus, up a bit more during the chorus, reserve a little bit of high end that I dedicate only to like a guitar solo or an interlude, some kind of instrumentation, right? So let's take a look at another example here, which is machine. So um, I have got my, let me go ahead and just, Um, well, I won't, I won't worry about that automation right now, but let's listen to this very basic little tambourine I got going on here. And I want to look at how this works in machine because this is a little different. You have to actually enable, um, enable it in machine. So when you are looking at these controls here, if you're a machine user, then you'll be used to this kind of master group sound. When you're on the sound and you click down here, you have automation and pages. I leave it on automation and you have MIDI automation. So I can do MIDI learn here if I wanted to, but if I choose host, right, then I can automate these controls. And if they say enable, I have to actually enable it. It starts to assign these controls like so. And then that's all I have to do. I didn't have to turn a knob. It's done. Those are automated. So cut off resonance and amount. So now I can go ahead. I'm going to hit record. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to uh, make some modifications to those values. And so if I, let's see, where am I? I got cut off. Let me make sure you can see, you can probably hear that, but I want to make sure that you can also see it. So we need to have a record on inside Cubase. So I'm going to hit record. And as I control these, uh, make, make these changes, sorry, there is some aspect of this which is show all used automation. Sorry, there is something here that I changed right before I did my, uh, turn, turned on my live stream. And I had my hide all automation enabled, but I think that it is now, I gotta turn on the right, go back here, hit record again, and I'm gonna change those values. And we can see now that the automation I'm writing with my knobs is having this effect. On the surface of this, on the surface of it, this is probably something a lot of people have encountered. And if you do this with Learn MIDI, you know, you're gonna, you, you might be thinking like, what's the big deal? But I started using host automation by accident in a few situations where I didn't really know how it was different from MIDI. 
And I was really happy when I went back to a project later on and I didn't have to relearn the MIDI or look up what had been assigned. Uh, I didn't have to assign a new control. I could also see on my controllers um, when the MIDI is being changed. I can actually see, uh, let me see if I can share uh, a, another screen here. I don't really have that camera set up, but let's go to this camera, which is on my machine. And when I am playing the, uh, the automation back, you can actually see these values changing down here, matching my automation, which I don't always get from MIDI. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. The host automation from this standpoint of displaying values on my controllers is very, very reliable coming back to it months later and having the same controls line up uh, without having to do MIDI learn or document what was assigned CCs. Um, that all uh, just works. Of course, MIDI is, there's a lot of MIDI when, uh, CCs when you think there's uh, 127 values, there's 16 channels, it's a lot. But a lot of those are already assigned to other values. So for example, MIDI CC7, uh, I, don't, I never assign that to anything else because that's dedicated to uh, volume. And if I assign it to something like cutoff, I very likely going to find that that MIDI CC7 screws up my sound because I think I'm changing volume, but it's changing cutoff because the instrument's pre-designed that way. So that's another nice thing about using uh, host automation. The plugin won't have any... Uh, confusion about what you're controlling. There's no chance that your host automation is going to control multiple things at once. Um, the setup is a little easier. Uh, it has this uh, sort of persistence over time when you come back to the project. It displays nicely and consistently reliably in my um, in my different like screens and stuff on my MIDI controllers. All of that just makes it really nice to work with. Plus, I am recording this, so it's like a performance. I can see it on the track. I can open up my DAW project, and I can see how my automation lays out. In, this, in some cases, I'll do whole compositions where I'm only doing sweeps and filter cutoffs and that sort of stuff. I'm not doing any uh, actual MIDI really, you know, I'm not doing like MIDI notes, I don't have MIDI parts, I don't have audio, I just have controls that are, are parameters that are manipulating the underlying sounds. And because the connection is so automatic and so reliable with host automation as opposed to MIDI automation, I have a great deal of confidence in the fact that as I'm writing and composing with host automation, that it's gonna it's gonna persevere in time. So, if you have any questions about MIDI versus host automation, questions about how and why I use it, um, feel free to comment, and I'll try and get back to you. If you have questions about other topics that you'd like me to cover, please also put those in the comments. Please like and subscribe the video. It really helps me, um, you know, get it out to more people, which I'm trying to do. Um, and thanks a lot for watching. I hope you have some great uh, new insights with, with, uh, with host automation. And I will see you next time. All right. Bye.